Hi there, uh, my name is Tony Sullivan. I'm a writer of uh, historical non-fiction and I'm going to start some reviews of other historical non-fiction books. But I'm going to start off with my first book, my own one, which is King Arthur, Man or Myth with uh, Pen and Sword Publishers, which was published in uh, 2020. Now, this is an investigation into the evidence for and against the uh, historical basis of King Arthur. And what I've tried to do is uh, approach it in a slightly different way from other authors. I'm not trying to... Um, suggest a particular figure. I'm not pushing a particular agenda. What I've tried to do is go through it in chronological order. And I've used my experience in the fire brigade. I've often noticed fire investigators at work. They'll try and work their way into the seat of the fire. And if they discover that there's inconsistent fire spread or there are multiple seats of fire, that's usually a cause for some questions to be asked. Now here, what we have is we have little or no evidence from the 5th and 6th century when a historical Arthur is supposed to have lived. And then um, an explosion of interest in the 12th century when Geoffrey of Monmouth writes his famous Kings of Britain book. Now, what I've done in that case is I've started from Roman Britain. I've gone through the sub-Roman period and then I've started introducing the sources that do give us some information. So we've got, we start with Gildas and Bede and then we get to the uh, 9th century with the Historia Britonum, which is the first uh, mention, literally men mention of Arthur. Doesn't say he's a king at all, but says he's fought some battles against Saxons. And we go through the, uh, the Welsh Annals, and then we get to the 12th century, Geoffrey of Monmouth's book, and then we'll discuss the uh, different traditions. You've got the Welsh tradition on one side, which is a more sort of mythical, magical Arthur fighting monsters and witches and giants. And then you have the French romances, which is the Arthur we kind of know today. And a lot of the themes that we associate with Arthur were introduced after the 12th century. So the round table, the sword and the stone, Merlin, all these, uh, all these aspects were all introduced, the Holy Grail, all, all introduced after the 12th century. So it may well be that these are um, additions to the story and the real story if it's true um, is a much more um, gritty we've got much more sort of petty warlord type figure in the fifth or sixth century the earlier he is the more likely he's living in a world of um, surviving Roman institutions perhaps the fragmenting Roman provinces perhaps there's still some Roman um, official positions surviving maybe some military positions. The later he is, the more likely he is living in a world of petty kingdoms and warlords and war bands and raiding and things like that. Okay, so um, I won't reveal what I found. Um, the bulk of the book really lays it out, the evidence out for um, the readers to decide, make your own decision. I come to the conclusion at the end. I try and put all the evidence, all the different sources side by side in an attempt to see which ones we can trust and which ones we can't, and if there are any contradictions, and I talk about them contradictions, and um, that raises some interesting questions as well. So I hope you like that. I hope you like the book. Uh, you can get it on Amazon, get it through Pen and Sword, and um, very soon there'll be another King Arthur book out that's just focused on his battle list. It is um, based on the assumption that he is an historical figure, and the battle list in the Historia Britonum is an authentic. Uh, oral battle list from the 6th century um, but based on those assumptions I think we can actually locate some of the battles okay I hope you enjoyed that and uh, if you want the book I'll put the details and the links uh, in the um, blurb below thanks very much bye